I'm Erin Sullivan. I'm a certified sommelier. I'm the general manager of Acme Fine Wines in the Napa Valley, and I'm a very proud member of the Wine Sisterhood. And today we are here at the Wine Sisterhood Clubhouse in the middle of downtown Napa, and this is where it all happens. Today our topic is older wines. How do you store them? How do you handle them? What are they all about? We've probably all heard the expression when something is aged like a fine wine. But you know, in reality, the majority of the wines that you'll find on a retail shelf these days in the United States are intended to be enjoyed in their youth. On the other hand, if you are a serious wine collector or aspire to be one one day, you may want to start acquiring wines that will benefit from aging. Okay, so let's break it down. What is going to help a wine be in it for the long haul? Well, the way I see it, there are two important components that are going to really lay a foundation for a stable, age-worthy wine. First of all, the tannic structure. And the tannins can be imparted onto a wine from either the oak barrels or from the skins of the grapes themselves. Also, you need vibrant acidity. And those are the naturally occurring fruit acids that you'll find in grapes. So, as you might have guessed, wines that are lower in acid and tannins are most enjoyable in their youth and wines that are a little higher in acid and tannins will benefit the most from aging. So let's fast forward. You've selected some beautiful bottles, you've built yourself a cellar, and it's time to open, maybe for a special occasion, one of these bottles, and you've been so good and resisted temptation, resisted opening them for years. So how do you handle this special bottle? Well, plan ahead a little bit and remove the bottle from your cellar where it has hopefully been stored on its side and set it upright at least 24 hours before you intend to open the wine. We stand it upright so that the sediment travels to the bottom of the bottle. We really want to enjoy the wine and make sure as little of that sediment gets into your glass as possible. It is totally harmless, but it just might interfere with your enjoyment just a little bit. We've removed the cork and we're ready to decant the wine. A note on the cork, always be careful to remove it with caution. With older wines, sometimes the cork can become a little soft. A little trick, we always think it's handy to use a light source to be sure that you cleanly pour the wine off over the sediment. So handy dandy little light source right there. Get your decanter ready. And we gently pour the wine slowly into the decanter. And by looking at that light source, I can see that we're pouring only wine and not sediment. Okay, now let's pour a glass. So on my left, we have the 1991 Silver Oak Napa Valley. And if we were to compare this to, say, this 2010 monogamy red wine, there's really a host of differences. First of all, in the older wine, we see the color is a lot lighter. And on the nose, more what we would call secondary and tertiary flavor aromas are starting to come through. The fruit has softened a bit and it's really more earthy and even some great mushroom and spice characteristics coming through. Whereas on the younger wine, rich dark color and really abundant buoyant fruit aromas are really coming to the surface. As you start to explore ageable and age-worthy wines, it can open up a whole new exciting way to consume wine. If you select a special bottle for maybe an anniversary year or the birth of a first child, opening up that bottle 10, 15, or 20 years down the road is really an amazing way to just commemorate life's milestones. You can see how the wine has changed, how you've changed in that period of time, and it's just a really special way to capture a memory in a bottle. Thank you so much for joining me today. And remember, if you have any questions, email me at winesisterhood.com. And until next time, cheers.